today we're going to be making a chicken coop um, out of reclaimed lumber. Um, two by fours and whatnot I've just had lying around here and taken off of structures and whatnot that I don't need anymore. And then uh, all the thin stuff will be off of uh, pallets. So let's see what we can do. Alright, we're going to start by just framing out a, a rectangle with uh, two by fours. Um, this will be a small coop. This will either be for our bantams or ceramas or cerama, however you say it. And uh, so this one's like, uh, I think it's 38 inches by 42 inches, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you've got overlap on the corner. So the, these pieces are actually 35 and these are an inch and a half. So inch and a half plus inch and a half on either sides. Uh, add it to your 35 gives that 38 this way and then 42 this way um, If you're if you're wanting to do like big stock chickens uh, Rhode Island Reds or anything like that um, You know you could use this, but I wouldn't probably go over three birds uh, Possibly but for for our use a small one like this would be fine uh, I decided to put the cross piece in there uh, to give the the deck boards a little bit more rigidity um, usually I do not put that in there because I use plywood for the bottom but since we're going to try to do this out of as much reclaimed lumber as what we can um, I'm just using pallet pieces and they were pretty spongy I mean I know it's just a chicken going to be in it but you know I didn't want it to wear we're cleaning it out and everything that it uh, starts sagging you know when you're trying to shovel out the droppings and whatnot so I threw that in there and then just throw it out there. Um, I put it together with a crown stapler, all the pallet boards. A um, couple of reasons. It's super fast. Um, it keeps the wood from splitting because you're not having to pre drill for big screws or nails and anything. So it speeds things up. And that one there, you can get it for like 30 bucks. So it's a good investment. All right, we got the, the floor done. Um, you know, it didn't break exactly dead on the edge, but I'm not concerned about that. I mean, you could could have ripped that board down and then, you know, ripped another to fill in that gap, but it's not a big deal. It's 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 up against the uh, um, the two by four, so it's it's not an issue as far as uh, pests or anything like that. But once you get that done, um, you know, we'll start uh, framing out the uh, the sides and we'll get to it and show you how we do that. The first thing we're gonna do is build another uh, two by four frame, exactly the same size as the one that we started with. Um, and that'll that'll be the support for the, the top of the walls. Um, so just get that one built and then just set it off to the side. Once you come up with a height for your coop, um, you can cut some boards um, for those. This one happens to be 34 inches from the top or the from the bottom to the top um and that'll that will be minus um you know the thickness of your floor so it's gonna be about 30 inches um from floor to ceiling inside so what i do is i just start on the corners and i'll take uh um one of my siding boards and <clears throat> fasten it you know at the corner make sure it's flush with the edge square it up um, and then go around it and do the other side and I'll do that to all four corners as you can see here and then the rectangle that we built um, a second ago I'll get some help and we'll put this um, inside of the, the tops of the four corners and hold that in place and that'll uh, that'll serve as the uh, structure for the top of the, the cube once we get the uh, the top um, of the structure put in you know basically all we'll have to do is go through and start dropping boards in um, you know tacking them in place along the side um, all the way around the perimeter and uh, yeah that'll be the the siding and the framework um, and the, the pallet boards you know they'll vary from like 3 8 half inch somewhere in that neighborhood and that's plenty strength um, you know to hold this up I mean <clears throat> I can really push and pull on this thing and it, it feels solid and it's you know a quarter of how many boards is actually going to be attached to it um we will 
come back and you know the the wall with the nest box and the uh, the door and window and whatnot. Um, we'll spend a little time on those, but the rest of it, I'm just going to uh, cut the boards and throw them in place. All right, we got one wall sheeted. Um, you know, you try to get them as close as you can uh, together, but there'll be gaps. And we'll do what's called a board and batten on this. So, um, you know, if, if you, which I'm, if you're using pallet boards, it will be. Um, yeah, they'll be bowed, they'll be miscut, and you'll have, um, you know, cracks and whatnot in between all of them. It's not a big deal. We'll, we'll close it off good, uh, and you won't have any draft issues um, once we get that done. And also, before I forget, um, I don't know how successful you are with uh, taking pallets apart, but uh, I know it could be a pain, so I'll put the tool that I use, um, how I made it, in the description of this video for taking pallets um, apart and getting useful pieces out of it. Alright, we got uh, uh, part of the nest box cut out and ready to put in. This will be a external nest box where you can check it from the outside. Um, that's just the ones we prefer. You know, you could do um, whatever you, do, you want. Um, It'll be a, a double nest box, so we've got three partitions. Um, these are actually just a 10-inch uh, by 8.5-inch um, rectangle, and then we measure out 4 inches and up 6 inches, draw a line between those and cut those off. Um, and then this will, be, this will be the side that sits in the coop, and this will be outside. Your, your lid will be here, and it will actually open up that way. Um, so you'll need three of those for a, for a double. So you'll need the two ends and then one in the center. Um, this is uh, a couple pieces of board. This one is nine, uh, 9 inches by 20 inches. This one is 6 inches by 20 inches. Um, this is actually plywood, just the old scrap piece that we found laying around. Um, you know, you can make it out of uh, pallet boards, OSB, you know, any, any sort of thing like that. But um, we'll put these together how they go um, you can kind of see how things would go together if I had an extra hand um, but we'll put this together and check it out and then we'll go to the next steps of building it all right we got this uh, this far on it this will be you know what you'll see on the outside of the coop um, little flop open you can reach down in and grab the eggs uh, so this will be the interior side uh, we've got to put a um, you know a board across the top here and then I like to put a little lip along the inside that way all your nest material don't get sloughed out every time a, a hen gets out of the, the box um, and this is this is 3 8 plywood you know it's pretty pretty thin stuff I mean it's still strong but as far as being able to fasten it together you know I had to be careful using the, the crown staper because I didn't want to split it all to pieces so I did use some tight bond um, to put this together if you do use wood glue make sure you get a good quality um, outdoor glue um, tight bond is is what I use for about everything bee boxes and everything else but uh, just wanted to throw that out there if you do use some real thin material it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and glue that up all right that's pretty much a finished nest, nest box other than the door that would be right here um, so you can see from the outside there's plenty of space um, you know you can see the whole nest um, so you know you won't overlook any eggs because of the small opening from the front or the inside uh that'll be what the chickens see what they'll be using um you know but we've got the lip here that way we can fill it full of straw or uh, whatnot um, and then you know of course the dividers so that they can have privacy um and then also i can't remember if i mentioned on this section or not this is bantam dimensions so if you're getting leghorns or uh, wine dots or you know bigger chickens this would probably be a stretch um, they they might be able to use it but I did I, I would probably go at least one or two inches higher and two inches deeper um, 
you know, to accommodate those birds if you decide to make this coop for full size ones. All right, we've got uh, two of the walls uh, sheeted, pretty much ready to go. What we'll do now is install the, the nest box. What I like to do on those is take a, uh, a two by four and you know the length of your nest box and screw that down to the framework of the floor. Um, two reasons, that'll give you something better to uh, staple through the nest box too and it will also um, keep the front of the nest box up off the floor a little bit just to keep uh, droppings and whatnot getting into it um, but we'll get that put down and then we'll throw the nest box in there all right the nest box installed uh, you know it's pretty solid just to have let's see i put three screws through the through the bottom of it into the uh, two by four that we just mounted and then shot a couple staples into one of the side panels but it uh you know it's sturdy as of right now but uh as you can see the front of the nest box is about even with the siding boards so what we need to do is put a nailer so it'll just be a, a board right here um, yeah, we could put it to the back side of the siding here and then the back side of, you know, the siding that goes here. And then that way the boards can come from here down here to rest on the coop, or uh, sorry, rest on the nest box. And then we will staple those into this nailer that we're putting on here. To shoot this real quick and show you if it wasn't clear what I was talking about with the uh, the nailer. You know, these boards come right up against it and, and get nailed into place, and then <clears throat> it extends beyond the nest box. That way, the next full one that goes top to bottom will catch it, and that'll help add stability. All right, we got the uh, the nest box slash tool holder, coffee cup holder in and the rest of that wall sheeted, uh, except for we've got to put one more board in and it'll be good. Um, I took the scraps from where I trimmed the ends off of these and just threw them together in a, in a door. It's just two pieces side by side. And then I was just gonna do a, a cross piece just to stabilize it, but my daughter wanted the, the backwards Z, so I went ahead and done that. And we'll get that installed on the other side now. Right. We went ahead and put the uh, the door in. There's nothing above it. Um, like I said, that was just out of scrap pieces of wood, so I didn't cut it for size. Um, I'll build the wall around it, actually, rather than, um, you know, building the wall and then building the door to fit the wall. Um, just one hinge is all we put on it. It's a good uh, heavy-duty door hinge. Um, and, yeah, this is not reused. It's brand new. But if you, uh, if you check out Lowe's and whatnot, sometimes you'll find some pretty good deals. Uh, they had these on clearance for like 75 cents, 80 cents or something a couple years ago. And I bought the whole box. Um, you know, it's like four, four or five dollar hinge, if I'm not mistaken. And I got it for, you know, nothing just because the style had changed. But anyways, that's what it is. Um, if you do put the uh, cross pieces on it, you know, the, the, the sides closest, the... Uh, the hinge may need a little bevel on them um, you know otherwise it'll probably go right there and hang up you know if you want to swing a little further you'll need to bevel that um, but that's that's where we're at and you know there'll be plenty of door for that we've got a uh, an upright support in place um, you know for the length of the, the wall for this door um, and what we'll do is I've cut a, another nailer and it'll go in behind and tack to both of those boards. That way, um, you know, we can bring boards from here to here and we'll have that nailer in place to nail to. That way that, uh, you know, the door still is free, but the wall and everything is stable. We got that nailer in place. Um, so we've got something to nail to top and bottom and we'll get the rest of this sheeted up. Or we might actually put a window in there. I've not made up my mind. We'll see. All right, I sheeted 
uh, this side of the wall and I decided to go ahead and put the window over top of the door. The main reason be behind that is that way inside the coop um, we could have one or two roosts over here out of the way then you know we'll have our nest box across from it then kind of like a walkway or yeah if you want to have feeders and stuff in there you know everything's kind of in line coming out and then um uh, yeah if we'd uh, if we'd set the, the window over here we'd have had to put the the roosts a little lower um and then i don't like to put them super low because then if it's too low they'll want to just sleep in the nest box so that's why i've done that but anyway um i thought that i had uh an old crank out trailer window but i do not so i went to lowe's and i picked up a piece of lexan um if you've not heard of that it's it's kind of like plexiglass except it's uh it's uv um rated and it's super super strong you will not have a problem with this um and you can drill it and put a screw in it um, I've, I've used the crown staple to staple it, but it's so strong, a lot of times the staples will bend on it. And it's, I mean, it's super thin. It's like eighth inch if that. Um, so what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna um, put a few pieces of uh, pallet board in here oh to kind of fill this hole up to where um, the Lexan will, will go in and we could, uh, you know screw it in place so we'll put those in real quick and check that back out in just a second we've got that opening above the door filled in um the two thin horizontal or the two thin vertical pieces and then a couple of uh, horizontal pieces and that's uh smaller than the piece of lexan and what i'm going to do is i'll just drill the four corners and then maybe one hole uh, halfway on the on the uh, the sides and top and bottom, and put eight screws in that uh, just hold that on place. And I'll probably run a bead of silicone um, underneath uh, the perimeter, and that way um, you know it's it's waterproof or weatherproof, and the the screws will hold that just fine. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and finish up everything. That way this will all be a painted surface and then we'll put the Lexan in place. That way, um, you know, you don't have unprotected, unfinished wood exposed or could be exposed underneath that. All right, we're gonna start covering the cracks in between the, the pallet boards and my battens are these here, it's uh, just, you know, thin strips of wood. These are actually a two by four that I ripped, just cut them into pieces, you know, across the width. So these are inch and a half by, I don't know, maybe quarter of an inch, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. It, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it can be your own preference. But I got these cut and I'll start putting them on. I did want to mention, you know, something excellent that you could use for this if you had the, uh, had it available would be um, a piece of wood lattice that uh, nobody was using. Break it down and it'd be perfect for, for the battens on your coop. We got this wall done um, with the strips. I, I forgot to mention a while ago, if you do rip down a board, it's way easier to go ahead and measure your board the same length as your siding and then cut those strips rather than cutting a bunch of strips and then having to cut each one of these little pieces individually to length. Uh, but that how it, <clears throat> that's how it turns out. Um, you yeah, know, they're not perfect. Um, you know, you'll have some uh, leaning and a little crooked because the gaps they're covering is between, you know, a board that may be, you know, an eighth of an inch um, difference in thickness. So <clears throat> you'll have a little bit of uh, creel or twist on those. And then I'm just going to point out the corners the way I do it. Um, you know, even though the, the crack of the board was here and you really only need a board here, um, I usually double up on the corners. It just gives it a, a cleaner look and uh, the way I like it. We've also got <coughs> part of this one done, um, these fours on. 
but uh, yeah, above the nest box. These will have to be um, trimmed down a little bit and cut to size, so I'm um, going to get on to that. Alright, we got the uh, strips on pretty much every part of it. Um, also around the, the front. Um, what I ended up doing with the window is I just kind of I put the uh, Lexan up there, traced around it, and then kind of just made a, a box frame around where that panel would go. And that'll go in like that. But like I said, we're going to uh, get everything painted up before we put that in. Just wanted to give a, a quick show of uh, you know, how it looks. If you want to keep it like a natural look, um, or you know, like a stain or whatever, it uh, you know, it really looks good, especially for being made of uh, what it's made out of. I've been working on the the coop, and I've had it set up on uh, you know, scrap pieces of wood here and there on the corners, to keep it up off the ground. Um, and I had had intentions of um, you know, just setting it on blocks or or rock or whatever. But today I came up with a piece of treated four by four. So what I'll actually do is I'll cut that into how bigger sections I can get out of this, make it even. I'm guessing it'll probably be about six, eight inches per per leg. And then I'll put them um, up inside of here and shoot a couple of screws through each corner um, into them. You know, if I had this before, it'd have been a lot easier um, when we just had the uh, the floor made. I could have put those on a lot easier. But since it's already um sheeted and, and walled up and everything we're just gonna go ahead and drill right through the uh the siding boards and i just flipped it up on its side to make it easier putting these uh these legs on that's another reason why you may want to try to do a little better than i did and put them on when it's just the the floor um you yeah, know this is a small coop it's easy to move around and i could flip it up and put these on easy but if you kind of build off the design and you know, your foot's or your coop's uh, several feet wider or longer, uh, you know, to make it difficult. Like I said, that was a, about a two foot piece, so I just quartered it up, ended up being um, five and three quarters because it was just shy of um, two foot long. <clears throat> two screws on through this board and two th screws through uh, that board. That way, the 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 legs aren't going up and pushing against the uh, the flooring boards and that'll be fine um, they're only protruding from the bottom maybe two inches uh, and that's fine you know you just want them to, to be able to uh, keep the the coop off of the, the ground these are treated so you don't have to worry about rot or bugs or anything as opposed to the coop itself you know it's non-treated bugs and all that would have been a problem so just want to get it elevated and like i said before you could use uh center blocks or rocks or anything um if you don't have any treated boards to use we're inside the coop um what i like to do before i start painting is go through and look for any of the fasteners pr protruding into the uh the living space of the chickens um there's one right there that i didn't get while ago um staples nail screws anything like that where you know they could be prone to getting an injury um and then i, I what i use is i just take a an angle grinder and grind it flush with the board you could use a hammer and just bend everything over but i i like to go through and kind of make it as safe as possible um, for them and for yourself because you'll be you'll be working in this area and you don't want to you know reach down in to grab something and, and get a staple in in your forearm or a screw or anything else so um, you know I like to go through and put eyes on everything from the inside if if you can get in there and uh, you know it'll help you out in the long run when I do the paint, I usually go to Lowe's and whatever they've got exterior-wise on the paint counter that's mistinted is what I pick up. And you can see this one's 20 bucks, and it's a good exterior uh, paint. And, yeah, you just got to kind of remember beggars can't be choosers on this because, you know, 
there's some oddball colors out there a lot of times. But every once in a while you get lucky. Um, this is almost like a barn red. I've already got the, the interior painted. Um, and I always paint the interior. Some people don't. I do. Because um, you'll have moisture and whatnot in the in the chicken droppings and you know this is a smaller coop so you know maybe down the road we outgrow it and we use it as a brooder so it'll have uh, feed and water both inside i like to go ahead and just go ahead and at least put one coat on the inside that way um you know it's protected and it's it's rot resistant and it's just got a layer there but uh we get cracking on the outside of it and see how she turns out We got one coat of paint on the inside, uh, two on the outside. I prefer to do at least two on the outside. Um, you know, rain, snow, sleet, hail, all that fun stuff goes on outside. So you want to get a good uh, protective coating on that. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and uh, throw in that Lexan window. All right, I just kind of eyeballed the uh, the holes that we drilled. Um, did the four corners and halfway through the the top yeah you know, with the, the silicone and screws in it i don't think it'll need any uh halfway around the side but you know just standard drill bit and you could go through and pop those holes out pretty quick i just kind of eyeballed it they're not exactly straight or anything like that but uh like i said we'll run a bead of silicone and we'll zap some screws in there and that'll be our window Roost, what I'm going to do is I've got a small piece of deck board, five quarter um, treated deck board, and I'm just going to rip it all the way down um, halfway. And you know, it's got a uh, beveled edge on either side, so I'll rip it down halfway and then I'll take um, just uh, the sharp corner off of both of these, and then I'll that's what I'll use for the roost. And these will actually sit. Um, flat rather than you know, <clears throat> up and down on the, uh, um, the, the the skinny side I and mean, that way the chickens will have more surface area um, you know they can roost with their feet flat out and in the in the winter time they can hunker down on their feet and keep all their toes and whatnot uh, good and warm that way they don't end up with frostbite or anything like that all right, out of a six inch board, which is really, let's see, uh, five and a half, you can get two um, good wide roost poles that are uh, like two and three quarters minus half a kerf. So, um, you know, they're, they're good and wide. And since I went ahead and had the table saw set up to knock the corner off of, uh, you know, the cut side, uh, it was a little bit more gradual than the factory uh, corner, so I just went ahead and uh, you know the fence was set and everything was it. So I went ahead and buzzed both sides. Um, so you know this is the the way they'll sit in the coop. Um, you know they can land and you know if their toes do extend beyond the edge, um, you know it'll be more rounded, so it'll be more comfortable. All right, we got the uh, the two roosts installed. Um, you know, for this small coop and bantams, uh, that'll be plenty, plenty, plenty of roost. Um, you know, there's almost eight linear feet of roosting space in this coop, so you know, more than enough for the birds I'm gonna have in here. But uh, you know, that way they have um, all the room they need to move around and get their pecking order pecking order established um, you know one's a little higher than the other you know so a little bit of variance for them um, if you're doing big stock chickens you know you'll probably just want to put one you know you'd split the difference and put one roost maybe right there and bring it across and uh, you know three or four birds on that would be about max um, when I put these in you know I just cut them to length and then I would go to the outside and just shoot screws through the siding into the into the board two screws at the into the ends of each of the roost boards and I'll come back and paint that up here in a bit but uh, 
yeah, they're they're good and sturdy, and yeah, there would be plenty for the chickens. All right, last thing pretty much we got to do is put a roof on it, and I'm running short of time, so I actually cheated a little bit. I went and I bought an eight foot um, two by six. And what that's going to do is we're going to use that for the framework of the roof. So the one side will be marked and it'll stay whole and that'll be your high end of the roof. The other side um, will be marked the, the width of your coop. And I draw a line diagonal from one corner to the next from, from five and a half inches down to nothing. And I'll cut that and that'll be um, the sides of your roof and we'll be able to give it the, the pitch that it needs for water to run off of. I'll go ahead and cut this. We'll put that part together and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, you know, if you look around, you can probably find a two by six, but I went ahead and just bought this one because I'm pressed for time. All right, this is the board that we cut off, uh, or the piece of board that we cut off that's the, the same length as the width of the coop. And then these are the ones that are cut from zero to full width. Um, and, you know, basically all that'll be is a piece of plywood over top of that. Um, the big part gets two hinges put in it so that whenever the roof is actually on it, it'll be... A hinged roof and you'll have access down into the into the coop so I cheated again I got a piece of 3 8 plywood for the roof um, yeah it's hard to find uh, decent plywood that's not super thick in a scrap heap um, OSB would have worked um, but you know this is 14 bucks for four by eight sheet so this is half of it so it cost me seven dollars I'm good with that um, but you know, it opens up and does a real good job. We'll walk over here in a second and check out um, a couple of the roofs that I've done this way as far as however we're going to decide to um, make it waterproof. This is the same style of roof on our Cotchins. And we ended up shingling this. This is the first one I did. And, you know, it works good, except it's a little heavy. And you need to probably go with half-inch plywood at least. Um, the 3 8 probably wouldn't be big enough. But, um, you yeah, know, same thing. It hinges up and it gives you access to the inside of this one as well. All right, for the roof of the, uh, the nest box, it is just three-quarter inch pine board. Um, it's got a bevel cut on one side because um, that'll be the side that butts up against the coop. So, you know, you want that good and tight. <clears throat> I already got one coat of paint on the outside, but um, like I said, it's just regular pine board, cut the length. And then, you know, pine is so straight grained and yeah, it doesn't have a lot of... Uh, um, split resistance so what I've done was I just took a couple pieces of scrap plywood and glued them and stapled them to both of the edges uh, just to give the board um, split resistance so that way you know if you don't accidentally slam it and half your doors falls off so that's what we're going to be using for the uh, nest box lid all right we'll do a quick over overview or tour of the coop now that it's done um you know here's the inside We've got sawdust on the floor and straw in the nest boxes it's uh you know pretty much ready to go uh we'll come back to this here in a minute and we'll put a couple birds inside just so you kind of have a, a visual reference of um, how that works but we've got the hinged roof close it um, and i ended up just leaving it painted i may come back and put um rubber roofing on top of it just because there's a contractor in my area that sells rubber roofing for like 20 cents a square foot um but i'm not sure you know the the paint is decent enough for right now so we'll see how that works 
Uh, we've got the the door. You know, if security against predators and anything's a, a problem, you know, you can put your latch in there, and that'll be um, you know pretty secure. Got the uh, the window in it. Got the nest boxes here on the side. That pops open. Uh, you know, you get in there to get your eggs and whatnot. Um, then again, you know, raccoons or whatnot are a problem in your area. Might want to put a latch on that. Um, you know, it's pretty secure, cute coop, pretty airtight. I did want to mention that if you're down, you know, south or anywhere that you're going to need extra ventilation, you know, with the roof being hinged, you can pick that up and put a 2x4 or 4x4 or anything like that you know underneath the roof and open this up to have better ventilation all right there's just a quick shot of let's see we got one two three four uh four yeah four roosters and two hens uh four of those are saramas uh two of those are english game bantams and you can see you know that's uh six birds and plenty of room um so you know we could get a few more in there uh we'll just see how these end up um, taking to it and then we'll go from there all right we'll do a quick walk around and check it out you know turned out pretty good looks pretty decent um you know depending on your collar preferences you may or may not like it but i mean it's, it's cheap uh i don't know we had maybe eight dollars worth of hinges on it uh five dollars for the lexan for the window um twenty dollars for the paint uh seven dollars for the piece of plywood and about four dollars for the two by six so this coupe cost us about forty five dollars and you know the ones that you get from tractor supply and other places cost several times that price and i guarantee this one will outlast those by a decade or two. So, hope this helps somebody. Yeah.